Just around the river bend. Um, okay. I, choose the I need everyone to say something. Steady as the beating drum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello. 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 Recording. And this time I have new batteries. So what are we talking about today? We start off with day three. We have not seen a strict person in three days. <laughs> <laughs> we have. <laughs> From a distance. Through the window. Through the window. Yeah. We went yeah. to the grocery store. We yeah, know. I was like, yeah, that yeah, cashier boy didn't know what to do with you. And you, were fell, yeah. you fell in love with the cashier. I did. He didn't know what to do with you I either. fell in love with... Edward Lyon? Everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Man. No. Well, should have seen him on the plane. Do you want to? <laughs> do you want to start it off and say hi to everyone? And oh. then... Wait, hold on. <laughs> I know the chips. The chips. The chips. Okay. Life on Side B is a ministry of Posture Shift, a missiological ministry equipping church leaders and parents on LGBT inclusion and care. Learn more at PostureShift.com. Also, we want to thank all of our patrons who keep the podcast going and growing through their continued giving. If you love this podcast, consider becoming a patron at Patreon.com forward slash Life on Side B. Now on to the episode. Um, hello everyone. Hi. Hello. Hey. Uh, this is Grant Hartley and all the co-hosts. Mine's Introduce Henry. yourselves. Yeah. Yes. Ashley. Ashley. Becca. Elizabeth. Josh. And we are in a retreat center in Connecticut. Connecticut. And we are looking out into the, the beautiful forest landscape. It's been gorgeous. Is it this has the been. first Absolutely beautiful. Life on Side B retreat? Yeah. This is. This is the yeah. first time. It's lovely. It's we decided good. to take a week so great. weekend in Connecticut to mm-hmm. be connected, to bond, and also to plan some stuff for upcoming for the upcoming season. Yes. We can't wait to share it with you. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. This has been so, so nice because I feel like we talk all the time throughout the season, but I don't really get to hang out with mm-hmm. any yes. of us. Yeah. And then the time that we're together is typically revoiced. Yeah. And like Becca's working like a crazy person. You're working. Like I'm working. You're working. Yeah. Josh, like everyone's doing. I've stuff. fallen in love with 15 different people. Yeah. <laughs> like your mind is somewhere else. Like there's just so much going on, and it's yes. just so nice to like be people together. Yeah. 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 Yet we still talk about queer stuff the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was absolutely. L- literally, there was a moment where I was like, "Yeah, my goal." I was telling Christian, "I was like, my goal for this weekend is for us to just like, kind of let go of like you know the." theorizing about the future of sexuality and faith conversation, then Christian it. was like, do you really think you're ever going to get this group to not talk about that? <laughs> yeah. Not we did have several discussions where we were like, and here's what we got to do to fix things in the church. And then, like, we just... And then we were like, why are we not recording this? I know, yeah. yeah. Like, this is an episode. We've, uh, I think we've had five episodes. Five yeah. episodes. And maybe five short ones, at least three. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. yeah. We should have yeah. just brought a production crew with us just to <laughs> just sit around us. and record. <laughs> yeah. That just great. leave yeah. the mic in the middle of the room. When we, when we get our production, like, you know... Budget up, yes. then we can do stuff like that. It'd be, be reality yeah. show. Be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Cameras, like Big Brother, but the side yeah. B edition. Yeah, like we it. got the honor of recording a season finale at Revoice, which was fun and exhausting. Yes, yes. so exhausting. You had just spoken. I had no words. Like, yeah. I don't know how I got through no. that recording because I was like, I'm done. I've said all the words yeah. for the day. What time did y'all start? It was like 11. Yeah. It was late. And everyone is so exhausted. it was exhausted. after the first day. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. it was a lot. I'm glad we did it. But the devil is real and continues <laughs> with things. She is real. He. 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 They. <laughs> what we don't know. We don't want to demonize any gender. <laughs> we just, the devil is real. Yeah. The devil is real. Because. Whoever they are, they're out there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I thought I had new batteries. I did not have new batteries. The recorder died. So then I set up a like kind of clunky situation. I was so excited because the way I had the mic set up, it was like on point. 
yes. to be able to It was going to be beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, you were really like anticipating gold. I remember. I you it, yeah. was really, and then I was like, well, crap. And then on top of that, I was like, well, at least I have really good audio for the first part and like semi okay audio for the second part. And the SD card did not record, it was locked. Ooh. I didn't realize it was locked. I was so mad. I don't even know what that means, but yes, yeah, yeah, it's like so bad. Has, when an SD card is locked, it won't accept new recordings. It won't accept new stuff. It's just that's in order to make sure it doesn't record over stuff that is already on there. Oh, okay. Okay. So like when you have stuff and you don't want to take a chance of it being deleted, you lock the SD card. And I didn't realize that I had locked it, and yeah, that's what happened. So yeah. because of that, we don't have the full live recording. If you weren't there and you were hoping to hear everything. We're just so sorry. Come in person next yep. year. Come in person next year. And it's going to be in June. In June. That's right. Uh, June 14th through the 17th. Right, uh, baby. Right. It's so we're not going to be doing our season oh, finale. Oh. Right. And it will be much earlier in the day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It will be a workshop <laughs> slot this year. Thank That's you. right. Okay, good, good, yeah. good. We're all yeah. well in our conscious mind. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So generally because we, we have part of the season like part of the episode recorded I just mm-hmm. generally wanted to hear general thoughts about the season what did you feel going through all of this season together especially because Ashley we didn't get your thoughts mm-hmm. in the recording right I'll be honest I don't remember all the episodes we did yeah I don't think I ever do though that's yeah. true me too yeah, what stands out to you like what stands um out? there were episodes that stood out I would definitely say that um the one I did with Henry towards the end that was a good one mm. The one with Dean. Yeah, that yeah. was that mm. was incredible. Some of the stuff he said almost had me in tears. Wow. We're talking about resilience. That man mm. is resilient. Um, Misty's with Becca about, you know, really seeing if it's time or not to yeah. exit yeah. a church. That was a church. Elizabeth church. and Becca, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Me and Misty. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. But That's time. one of those I was in and have listened to more than once. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was profound. I knew there was some at the beginning, but I can't remember. The Jack episode was just fun. I was geeking out on yeah. that one. I just had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was excited about that one. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was one of the, I think as we go through, like through the seasons, we just keep getting better and better. And this was like one, like our best so far. I hope that every season is our best so far. But like this one, I was, I was really proud of what we, what we were able to do. I felt yeah. like we were a little more coherent than other times. Mm-hmm. Like we really... Not that we always don't stick to the theme, but I feel like this time we did. Plus, we were you were so on top of when we recorded and having that orderly part. Like, I was just really proud of the work we put out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I don't remember if I said... I know I said this in the live recording, but I don't remember if it's in the part that we have or not. So you might hear this twice. Um, but I was really glad with how we organized it. Because, like, the first half of the season was about kind of what does resilience look like. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the second part was examples. Yeah. Of what mm-hmm. are yeah. forms and ways that we are resilient? So, like in divorce, in staying or leaving church, and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Mm. So I loved it. I know for me, one of the big ones um, that was really impactful was the episode with Sarah Claire Smith yeah. on listening to your own story. Yeah, that one was good. That one, like that one, tickled my brain. Oh, I oh, that was yeah. the one that I, I I was in it. I've listened to it a billion times. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. she's literally in my church, and I just could listen to her speak all the time. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of good stuff. Any other thoughts here um, that you want to share? I think we grew yeah. during this yes. this season too. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'll say personally for myself, but it sounds like it's universal. Like we started off with this this large Idea. concept mm-hmm. of resilience and like what does it look like? And I feel like through the interviews that I was able to be a part of through. The conversations and then just through listening through the season, like I grew more resilient yeah. in the process. Yeah. I, I felt that. Like this year was a very practical season for me. Like I, there's, there's a, some stuff that Josh had that I had said already. But like this year, I really had to like practice resilience if that makes any sense. And I yeah. feel like being able to continue to work with you guys, being in contact with you guys, I was telling Josh, y'all kept me sane. Mm. It kept my head above water to not be always mm. in the same thing. To be able to just kind of like stick my head above water and take a breath of fresh air and talk about something else and do something else really kind of really pushed me forward. And I learned some very practical lessons in resilience this year and just through life in general, feel like I came, became more resilient and really like surprised myself as to like what I was really capable of and had to mm. learn some hard things about myself too. Like, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Like, you unlearn certain coping mechanisms, unhealthy coping mechanisms when you're young. And you're like, oh, cool, I unlearned that bad thing. And then you hit a hard situation, you're like, oh, but I ain't got nothing now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like what I grab onto now that I don't do that bad thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, what, and so it was, it was really a very practical year. Hard year, practical year, but yeah. I came out a better person on the end. Yeah. For sure. I, I love, too, that um, some of the episodes that I got to do were about really, like, honestly dark aspects yeah. of life like doubt and deconstruction was one of them that was we a good one one on mm-hmm. shame yeah yeah um that's think... one of my favorites when people ask me what i suggest when that episode you guys did it at, at qcf this year is one of the ones that I was suggest. really it fun. was really good we were we were it rolling. was deep yes. but there was i i felt like there was a hope and a lightness yeah. mm-hmm. that kept mm-hmm. yeah. surfacing throughout it so yeah for sure i'm excited to one. do that again at QCF. Yes. Yes. coming up baby yeah. Yes. QCF, it, put it on your calendars. It's Grant's going to be there twice in two different things. Like, keep a hold of that. Like, I would love, them. oh my gosh, I would love to meet anyone who comes to QCF. Please yes. visit. Um, Please. I would love to chat with Jan- you. So. It's January. It's, Is it I, the 8th? I, uh, I forgot. Whatever. Seven. Look it up. Yeah. If you're going to QCF, you probably know what the DC. Are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I still got to buy my tickets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> plane tickets. I, I bought the tickets. Okay. But. <laughs> Yeah, no, I remember at the beginning of the season that I had said I wasn't feeling very resilient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I definitely think I've learned a bit more resilience of just even those ways of how to process better and yeah. to stand better. And in those moments of really big difficulty, I feel like I've gained tools mm. that can help me through it mm-hmm. in ways that I did not have before. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a lot of it, is hearing stories from people who have experiences that are very unlike mine. Yes. So being able to stretch my understanding, to learn from them about experiences that I just don't know much about, Mm -hmm. and then hearing how they have gone from survival to thriving and that bounce back with resiliency. Um, it was just a good reminder of why we need to be able to share stories yeah. with one another and why we need to hear from people who are so very different from us mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because we learn coping tools and gain experience yeah. in ways that we wouldn't get firsthand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. And with that, we hope you really enjoy this clip from the live episode it's it's going to cut into we were we started going through mm-hmm. um reading through the episodes of the season yeah. and then halfway through that that's when the recorder died and then i had to set it up uh, we really just huddled around one microphone yeah. and just started talking mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um you mostly I, missed a lot of me and henry cutting up about oh, nonsense. Yeah. i'm also <laughs> sad that we, we they missed the game that we played yeah. which was really fun the oh, one that we yeah, did. Yeah, no, I remember. Because I remember me and you talked we'll about it quite a bit like ourselves. Yeah. 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 I think we played We'll just, tell you yeah. off the record. No, I'm just yeah. trying. <laughs> um, so enjoy that. I think around when we got to Jackie's episode, that's where Picks the recording cu- cuts in. Did we get the Q&A? Because I uh, love, yeah. I mm-hmm. love the, the Q&A's look, there. Look forward to that. Yes. Yeah. Stay for the Q&A. Yeah. I, can't wait I have to see. I haven't edited it yet. I have to see how I'm going to do because, like, you can't with the mic. You don't pick up the questions. Oh, yeah. But I think I no. Record. You we re ask the questions. We ask the re ask the questions. So that'll be in there. So enjoy this. Can't wait for you to hear it. Yeah. We're gonna love each other. Okay. Barbershop Quartet. So, oh, yeah. so the Jackie, the Jackie episode. Also, oh, you're. Uh, Josh, you couldn't have been more right because we were like all working really hard to like get it just right, and I now. was sweating through that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I hopefully you couldn't tell. No, you killed like, it. Yeah. And then as soon as it was over, I was like, oh, I need to take a shower. This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was so fun because, like, she had this professional setting in her closet. She was in a closet while we were recording. And then it was a professional mic. We're like, no oh, you're good. No comments or editorial <laughs> opinions right there. Yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but <laughs> but then my favorite part is that she's coming in like this is just a Tuesday. Yeah. 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 And then um, then by the end of it, I love when she was like, y'all are cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then and I was like, oh, Jackie. No. It's like whenever, but because like this white people in like 
other people of color approach formality different based on somebody's like mm. rank or title yeah. or honor. Yeah. And then so like one of the interns called her like yes. kept calling her yes. Jackie. Yes. I texted Elizabeth. I was like, if this young self does not stop calling her like that, <laughs> he does not know her. And I messed it. And I was like, can you please refer to her as Jackie Hill her Perry or name, Mrs. Please. Perry? Because yeah. I kept calling her Miss Perry, and I'm older yeah. than her. Yeah. But I'm just like, mm-hmm. yeah, yes. All right, so we had Jackie Hill Perry, and then after that, we had Paolo. Mm-hmm. And yes. I talked Aww. about sexual integrity, Ooh, Paolo that Rico. Good. Mm-hmm. That Ooh, was Josh went into that some was an stuff. Incredible episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was uh, literally probably the episode I was the most nervous about, obviously. Um, and I was so glad that Paolo would be the one mm-hmm. to be there for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Um, thank you for that. Josh. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. For thank you. It's a modeling of transparency that you yes. don't see very often. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it, yeah, it was good. Well, I and like I want to say thank you to like everyone who like w- reached out and was very gracious and all of it i just felt like i can't talk about transparency if i'm not transparent yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like <laughs> like you can't call others something you yourself are not yeah yet. no and i mean every everywhere else in my life i was transparent but i just wanted people to know who they're listening to yeah. and all of that yeah then we had our ace panel led by grant mm. with so colin michelle and will Oh, fun. That was a lot of fun. It was so fun. And I love each of them individually. And I honestly did not know how they were going to interact like together. together. I was like, they're all they're all so lovely. And I just was, was like, ah, what's going to happen? I don't know. It's just interesting. Putting you and Colin Bryce together. Because <laughs> y'all are the two most chaotic people in my life online. Like, I'll see things. I'm like, y'all are chaotic. <laughs> my gosh. It was so, so fun. Good, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then um, we had Mary for our co-host from season two yes. return. Yes. And Grant, Ashley, and I talked to her about LGBT media um, or representation in media. Oh yeah. my gosh. And okay, Mary, yes. if you're listening, <laughs> I've gotten into Supernatural after that episode. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we, we talked about that episode yes. and she was talking about like a, a, like a gay subtext. Yes. I'm in season three and no subtext Oh, wait has for it. Appeared. Wait for it. It's, no, the it's, only, it's there. The only subtext is my feelings for Jensen Ackles. <laughs> 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 anyway. I just, and Jira yeah. Padalecki. Anyway. There was yeah. just something so enjoyable about having Mary back on and literally within a minute and a half, She's already going into queer subtext in Harry Potter fanfic. Love <laughs> <laughs> just like, deep I mean, dive. Not a hey, how you doing? Welcome <laughs> back. It's like, let me tell you about the most obscure thing on the internet. I love it. <laughs> it was good. We love you, Mary. Um, and then Johanna Marie. Woo! Yes, oh, that was fun. Yes, came on to talk about doubt and deconstruction. With Becca mm. and Grant. Oh, I love that episode. Yeah. That was You were fun. great. Talk all about the were. Like, hosts were like my favorite this year. So sorry for all of Yes. Which one was that one? All of the ones oh. that we got to host yeah. with my favorite. I know, because I think we were intentional about which ones we're hosting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. true. And also, props. Awesome violin. Playing over here. Yes. I didn't yeah. okay. <laughs> Playing violin at Revoice tonight. Awesome. Yes. yes. And, and then, Johanna shared with me that it has been, what, how many years? Eight years. What? Since she's been playing. That's on the a whole child. And oh. she just went up there like nothing. Like oh it was wow! Nothing, right? I, we could. We that's enough. Gifts, that's talent. That, love yeah, that. It's beautiful. Oh my it's gosh. It's a gift. And then Art Pereira came back on to the podcast to talk with Elizabeth about committed friendships. Mm. Shout out. Oh, yeah. That fun. was great. We had fun. And we discovered that we are the same exact people. Y'all yeah. really are. Y'all really are. <laughs> yes. And then um, Kiefer Lucci and Jesse White came on to talk with me and Ashley about cross-cultural missions. Uh, that was mm. that was so much fun. It was a phenomenal episode. It was just really cool because you had people with experiences and understandings in cult- cross-cultural missions of every like continent yeah. and area. Well, no, not every, but most a lot of different ones. Yeah, I was like, wait, calculating. Four of the seven? Nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not every. Yeah, um, but um, it was a lot of fun. And then Elizabeth talked with Adeline and Ben on trans identity and faith. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was, yeah. It was really powerful. That was when I re-listened. I was like, yeah. let me, like, catch this yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, Joel 
Uh, Briggs came out with, and talked with Grant about creativity and resilience. Sweet yes. baby Joel, sweet baby Joel. Yes. <laughs> Misty Irons talked with Becca and Elizabeth about when to stay or leave a church. Mm. That was good. That was yep. raw. I yes. think I needed to like take a bath after that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yes. oh, that's a yeah, theme bath. here. Okay. <laughs> Shower, bath. <laughs> that's my comfort place. Love yeah, that. That's my comfort place. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wesley Hill and John Stark came on and talked yes. about prayer. Shout with out Ash and Becca. Yes. That. yes. That I forgot I wanted to be on that. Then it came out and I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't get to interview John. <laughs> because of your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You were on the side of the road somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, then <laughs> Dean Samuels came back on to the podcast to talk with Ashley and Henry about divorce, life I after cried. divorce. Cried. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. I wanted to give him a hug. It's like when someone's like bearing their soul, and then they're halfway across the country, and then we just end. I'm just like, I want to buy you a drink, coffee, yeah. and give you a hug. Like yeah. when yeah. you yeah. say emotional labor. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. was labor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Um, and then uh, Gabriel came on to talk with Henry and Grant about living with HIV. And then uh, Kristen came <laughs> so on to talk about relationships across beliefs. Oh, yeah. With that Grant, was good. Henry, and I. That was great. Kristen uh, does Orina to Love. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Comer Nikki. Yeah. See, I can pronounce her name right. I didn't when do it in the there. first, yeah. I didn't do it in the I episode. Know. Did it now. All right, so that was our episodes. So, yeah, I mean, I, I know that at the beginning, um, when we asked about what episodes we were looking forward to, Grant had talked about the ACE panel, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it was, it was, what I liked about it was, I think it offered a perspective that people didn't think they need, like non-ACE people don't think they need mm-hmm. or, or didn't think they need, but the things that they said could be so helpful for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 It's just, Yeah. Was there any other episodes that stood out or something else that came to mind that you were yeah, thinking about that you would like to mention? Um, hmm. I, I feel like we have to mention how like overwhelmed and amazed and delighted we were in the Jackie episode yes. when Henry mm-hmm. constructed this beautiful question oh. of since you wrote Gay girl, good, good God. Because you're not young. Good girl. Right. Yes. I yes. The first time. She yes. said gay God, good girl every gay time. God. Yeah, that's fine by me. Gay God. Gay God, good girl. <laughs> but when you had asked, since you wrote the book, has has anything changed? Yeah, are there any viewpoints, any viewpoints you either points previously held or taught that have changed? And that, the answer she gave that was, yeah. Amazing. And I think we were all kind of holding our breath on uh-huh. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, where's this going to go? Yeah. I was driving and I was like... <laughs> Yes, right? And then when, I think the cherry on top was when she said, when I re-release that book in, the, in a revised yes. version, I am going to omit anything that I said yeah. about, any, you know, anything that seemed discouraging yeah. Yeah. outside the <clears throat> posture. Like, yeah. yeah. Thank you. That was good. It. That was really good. Yes. Yeah. I, I honestly have to say, I think this was my favorite season. We're getting good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have to say, I was, this was the most efficient season. And yes, so, it was. And that's efficiency true. is my love language. And so Well, and I, I feel like I I came into the season and at the beginning of at the first episode I shared that for normally when we do seasons, I feel like, okay, I have a little bit of like feeling groundwork. I feel like I have my feet on the ground in this topic, but mm-hmm. I want to learn more. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the beginning of the year, I was a hot mess. I mean, I'm always a hot mess, but like I was a hot mess. And I was like, I do not feel resilient yeah. at all right yeah. now. And I mean, I'm still still struggling, you know, still mm-hmm. going forward. But I I think it was actually a journey for me of building resilience in my own life. Yeah. Going through like the episode I did with Sarah Claire about listening to your own story. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of the most foundational conversations I've had in my life. Mm. I've re- I was in the episode. I edited the episode, and I've still re-listened to it like six times. Mm. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Because I just love the way she's able to help understand how important it is for us to understand ourselves. Yeah. Like, I think it goes back to that St. Augustine quote of help me understand myself, yeah. so, know myself more so that I might know you, God, mm. yeah. more. Mm. Yeah. And so how we have Hockey. to understand ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like you season, know him. <laughs> this season was extremely practical. And I think yes. that's what I really loved about it. Yeah. yeah. We... we 
you know, covered a lot of topics yeah. and a lot of things that were that we hadn't talked about before in, in previous seasons. But everything was like rooted in this practicality. Yeah. yeah. Of like we a, anything I listened to, any of the interviews we had, there were takeaways mm -hmm. that I could actually apply to my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope all the mm -hmm. listeners felt that way, but it was like, really great. So I kind of want to talk a little bit more really quickly about um, what have we learned about resilience over the last year? I want to talk, I'm going to mention a few things that actually some of us said in the first episode mm -hmm. and maybe see what you think about differently mm -hmm. or if there's anything oh. built You on recorded that. us? <laughs> yes, I did. And then I went back and listened to and it and I took notes <laughs> to get questions. You told other people about what I said? Oh I love God. that the one, the one comment that I have about resilience for Grant is res Grant in the gym. Because you kept talking oh, yes. about building muscle. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, that now that I'm beautiful. working out. Yes. I, was, <laughs> I was, no, I was working at a gym and there are some fruitful spiritual metaphors yes. that yes. happen working out. We well, were like talking about those cali uh, calluses mm -hmm. and like. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Calluses. Hand, calluses. I was like, calisthenics? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the calluses, like. By by lifting weights a lot, mm. you build up calluses on your hands, mm. and yeah, and then you tear it and all of that. But I, I feel like as I talked about all of ours, you know, like Henry talked, you talked about the scars from your surgery mm -hmm. and how it hurts, but it also heals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth talked about how even Jesus had scars, yeah. mm -hmm. and how that, and like even our Savior preserves scar, um, has scars in his body. Mm -hmm. Becca talked about persevering, looking forward. Gave the example of kids in school during COVID mm -hmm. and like how the perseverance through that. Mm -hmm. um, and Ashley talked about like the that well built wheel, like that wheel that was mm -hmm. built so something that's built so well. And I guess like I don't know. I'd love to hear it. what are your all thoughts about resilience now having done a season about different aspects of stuff. Mm -hmm. I th oh someone's cleaning out there. Mm -hmm. um, we love that. Um, I think over the past year, for me, something, the way I've sort of described my spiritual life, I was just talking with, to, to Greg Coles about this, but it feels like everything in my life that gave me security that is not Jesus is being stripped away mm. from me. Mm. And he... I was saying that to, to Greg Coles, and he said, I know you didn't mean this in a joyful way, but I, I think that that is a joyful thought. Mm. 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 And so doing that, me too, um, doing, having that process over the course of this season while, while doing yeah. these episodes, that's really what it feels like is everything that, I, that used to make me feel stable and secure no longer makes me feel stable and secure, mm -hmm. and it's just Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just Jesus. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah, I would say for me, I think throughout the course of the season, uh, resilience has uh, taken this new meaning of where it's like, resilience means being able to adapt to the seasons of life that God has placed you in or what you're going through and it's like how do you best adapt to that season instead of longing, man, I wish this was still like this a year ago, or like, mm -hmm. oh, why is this like that? It's like, mm -hmm. The Lord is growing you and pushing you somewhere else and learn to adapt to that as an act or a form of resilience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, looking at how resilience, we automatically think about whatever negative thing that you're having to build back up from, that you're starting with something pushing you down. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's been such a great season, I think a lot of it has to do that the assumption of resilience is that there is hope in that idea that yes something bad has happened but it is an assumption that you are bouncing back you are finding strength you are getting back up again and so there's this inherent hopefulness to it that um, sometimes you miss if you're not looking at the how am I going to get back up so that practical part of it is yes. like the what are we going to do now that we've been knocked down and mm -hmm. there really is joy in that I mean Greg is like the most joyful person I think I've ever <laughs> met so it makes sense that he would Say that and yeah. see yeah, that. the audacity. I know. <laughs> right? God, positive people. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's that. That's what I've gotten out of this season is that it wasn't a downer of talking to people about all these hardships. They just Look, we were just talking, talking about, about you. You walked then. <laughs> Greg Cole's Greg just Cole's walked in the room. In the room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi. He was like, did I hear my name? <laughs> we were literally just talking about you. We'll go on. <laughs> it's already done. <laughs> We've moved on. We'll see you later. You have to listen to the episode. <laughs> you are the most joyful person we have met. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all shocked. Yes, yeah. that's what he said. Any man that says all shocked. Shocked. Yeah. Yeah. shocked. I'm not joyful in a fake way, Josh. I'm actually talking about this yes. about you Any yesterday, way. but in yes. genuine way. Because I can't stand perky people when you're like, this is fake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is fake. Take but, what you're selling somewhere yes, else. Yes, go mm-hmm. ahead. Mm-hmm. Yep. But like, the thing I love about Greg, we're just going to, we're making this an admiration of Greg we're Cole's come, moment. Bringing it back. Yes. Yeah, we're bringing it back. Is the fact that he understands the reality of what's happening in life, yeah. and yet still can can, mm. can live and enjoy mm. in the midst yes. of that. So yeah. I'm like, okay, you are one of the you are literally one of the only like perky people I can actually be around. Greg Cole. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so much delight. Like okay. delight. Yes. I love it. I yeah. Go ahead. I, w- I was going to say. I think for me, I have my takeaway is that resilience is communal. Yeah. Mm. That. Come on, yes, now. girl. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on now, preach. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just mm-hmm. from from the first episode to today, I think I feel like the first episode, at least my mindset, was very much on my situation, mm-hmm. on my resilience, and what yeah. I was going through, and it felt so lonely. Mm-hmm. And going going through the season, listening to other people's stories of resilience hearing them go through the process just reminded me like, oh, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. And we need each other. Like if I didn't hear their stories, then I wouldn't experience Mm -hmm. that same Mm -hmm. level of resilience. If I didn't hear their stories or someone didn't hear my story, then they wouldn't be with me Mm -hmm. to bring me up into Mm -hmm. resilience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, I loved the fact that I could walk away with just yeah. seeing the communal nature of resilience, and I think it's God's design. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's almost like bearing one another's burdens yes. uh-huh. makes it lighter. Yes. Who, yeah. That oh, was what a concept. Uh-huh. What Somebody a concept. Somebody said that somewhere. <laughs> yes. Somebody. I don't know where. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, that actually. Yoke is easy. Burden is light. Okay. I heard it. I it's in know. a book. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was John Piper. <laughs> 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 oh Lord, oh, let's right. not go. No. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Moving I, on. I didn't read that one. <laughs> I didn't read that one. Uh, From the live studio audience. <laughs> yeah, I wrote one note down when I, when we were in worship, um, and we were tonight singing the song about He won't fail, mm-hmm. oh, and I was thinking was about how. Resilience, when I think that it's based on my own ability to get back up, I'm not going to be 100% guaranteed that I will get back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's based on his faithfulness. Yeah. yeah. And based on the communal aspect of the like reality mm-hmm. of other people. Mm-hmm. Like um, One of the things that I've been going through like in the past few months is um, I had a moment where um, I was watching, Christian has been having me watch Stargate SG-1 because it is his favorite show. I don't know what that is. Okay. It's, a, it's a sci-fi show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds and- complicated. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I'm bringing this up, I promise. Um, and there was an episode where one of the characters is put into a mental institution mm-hmm. or like into an institution that they think he's crazy. He actually has... I'm not even going to go into the sci-fi of it. He is not actually crazy. It's a sci-fi show, and there you go. That's it's all you need to know. It's a sci-fi thing. Yeah. It's a yeah. sci-fi thing. Got it. But, but um, um, I have a history of being um, like in um, checked into a hospital for mental health, and um, it has created in me many times a fear of ever being hospitalized mm. again. Mm-hmm. Um, and watching the episode r- arose this fear of like, what if one day I have a breakdown and I can't get back out of it and I'm gonna be in a hospital mm. again? Um, and, whoa, I'm getting a lot realer than I thought I was ever gonna get it. going there, okay. You're not alone. You're yeah, not alone. and it has had to be understanding the faithfulness of God and the support of my family um, to be able to understand that it is not on me. 
Yeah. And that it is the understanding of us caring for each other and God caring for us mm -hmm. that then we can have the understanding of the strength that comes from resilience. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if it's based on me alone, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Like, or any of us. Yeah. Let me think of that passage. Um, Praise be the God of all comfort. Um, that's, an, that's one of my favorite passages. But anyways, so I'll, yeah, I'll message later. Second Corinthians. Yeah. Yes. yes. There okay. we go, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who finds for us in our yes. struggle so that we can then Comforts us with others. the comfort of, yeah, he yeah. says it like yeah. 15 times mm -hmm. in two verses. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I also, on a lighter note, want to say that this, I have checked this. I have fact-checked this. Oh. This is the season that we have most quoted scripture <laughs> ever. Oh. You know me. I stay ready. What? Okay, yes. yes. That is something to celebrate. As I, yeah. I know. We're in the word. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Also. Tell that off to credits. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. Um, can, we, can I email John also Piper's Also, the gay agenda. The gay agenda. <laughs> Discipleship. Yes. And being in the, the word. word. Yes. I want to get John Piper on the podcast. Could you imagine? The no. six of us Why? are Listen, doing that. He okay. doesn't know who we are. <laughs> then which would be the best we're part nobodies. about it. <laughs> Y'all. Who is we? Nobody. <laughs> I have had a goal for this podcast. That yeah. we will get through the entire podcast and never have had more than 10 straight people on it in its entire oh, yeah, I like lifetime. That. I like that. This... This season, we've had more straight people than ever. We are up to oh, really? seven. Ooh. What? Yeah, we had John Stark. Who we else? had Sarah, uh, Sarah, uh, Claire oh, Smith. Kirsten. We had, uh, Kristen. Mm -hmm. We had someone. Misty. 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 We had yeah. Misty. I feel like there was someone else. Misty doesn't count, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Misty's <laughs> an honorary gay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll take out Misty. So We're at part six. Of the <laughs> yeah. John was there. Yeah, I don't know. There was something else, but I was like, wow, yeah. we bumped up. Like, yeah, it yeah. was those four okay. or something. So no straight people next year? Next season? I don't know. Okay. We'll see. We'll okay. see. Can I, I just said 10. <laughs> As for me and my household, I will never say never. Yeah. We, we, should, we could be open to more straight people. Yeah. We can. I, I mean, it's not like it's a hold and rule. I was just like, oh, wouldn't that be crazy if we get through this whole thing and I can count on two hands Wow. how many people... People just mm. elevating voices more than anything. Else. Like yeah. if we no, get to right. season twenty six or something, like the view, we are not getting like, that. We are not <laughs> getting that. Unless like, this podcast suddenly suddenly comes yeah. into money and we have editors and all that stuff, we are yeah. not going twenty six. Be like season, season fourteen, yeah. <laughs> supernatural. Okay. Yes, there's angels Grace. everywhere. Yeah. Grace is up to nineteen. We can compete with Grace. Oh uh, yes, that's yeah. true. Okay. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts on resilience? Anything else? I keep singing the Katy Perry song "Resilient" in my head every time the word "resilience" comes up. So. You said that the first episode. Yeah. Did I? Oh, you well, also had an episode. Yeah. You also had the song of I, "I Get Back, Knocked yeah. Down, I Get Up." Yes. Yes. Tough yeah. thumping. Yay, nineties. If only we could use copyrighted music on a podcast. Yeah. I know. That's Barber that's barbershop quartet. I'm a tenor. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I hope this has been a joyful season for you all. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments or maybe something that has, it doesn't have to be a question, it can be something that actually impacted you mm. from an episode that you would like to share? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say thank you all for unwinding. Yes. It's really nice. You listen to us while we fold your laundry. I'm repeating you so then it goes in here. Mm -hmm. Have you had an itching to like... Fold, fold something right now. You're like, You're okay, like, okay, fold what do paper. I fold? Yeah. Um, I guess I wanted to, well, first of all, just say thank you for this podcast. I think it's a really meaningful resource for a lot of people and a really mm -hmm. meaningful community for a lot of people, especially when queer Christian is very hard to come by nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, very hard to find in embodied community. So it's nice to have people to do your laundry with. Um, yeah, we will happily do laundry with you. Okay, yeah. come to the house, girl. Okay, you can do laundry. I, Normally, I he's doing say. laundry while he's recording. <laughs> that yes. has happened. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes, we, we have yes, talked. Yes, yes. Well, we have what talked. Did, what did we talk about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, in the podcast, y'all have talked a lot about like navigating relationships where you're maybe out as a Christian to Christian people, but not as a queer person to Christian people, mm -hmm. and a little bit less about being out as a Christian to queer people, or being out as a queer person to queer people, but not as a Christian to queer people. Mm -hmm. So, like having queer friends mm -hmm. where you still kind of half in the closet, mm -hmm. um, which is just like. <laughs> kind of a big topic and a big deal, but how, and this is 
maybe not like fun, lighthearted, quick, easy questions. Now you're good. But like, how have y'all navigated sharing about your faith with queer friends who maybe are queer first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially sharing about being gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So question for listeners, um, how do we navigate kind of the Christian closet, basically, where you come out to Christ other queer people as queer first, mm -hmm. and then later on sharing about your faith or your sexual ethics as a side B person, how do you navigate that? Yeah. Hmm. I, I, this is a great question. Mm -hmm. And let's say this is sort of like Elizabeth's job. This is the yes. one. Why don't you, yeah. just, <laughs> you just answer this one. Like, take this one. Uh, what was it? Like a few weeks ago, I was on the street corner mm -hmm. in the West Village across the street from, um, oh gosh, Stonewall, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. handing out iced tea that we were calling LGBT. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> and it's funny, nobody was taking it when we were just like, iced tea, iced tea. And we were like, what are we going to Gay tea. <laughs> <laughs> LGBT. And then literally people were going down into the subway and coming back up and being like, did I hear gay tea? <laughs> so it works. We're learning as we go. But in those moments, it's like I'm coming out as queer and Christian at the exact same time. Yeah. And I think what I've learned in those moments and just in conversation and meeting with people is I, I think we see it as such a hard thing to reveal. And understandably so. Mm -hmm. You know, there has been, we've had bad experiences. There has been a, so much history of pain. And we want, we want to safeguard ourselves. We want to safeguard the people that we're talking to. But I think when we embrace that reality of both our queerness and our faith and, and just let it be what it is mm -hmm. and let it be normal and be proud of it and mm -hmm. not be ashamed of it and not be like, hold your hats, folks. I'm also a Christian. But just mm -hmm. let it be a natural part of your life. And, and you're not only saying it, but you're living it out. You're doing it. Your posture, everything about you is just exuding Christ. Mm -hmm. Then there isn't going to be the same kind of tension. I think there's actually going to be a lot more curiosity mm -hmm. in your faith. Yeah. yeah. Like, whoa, yeah. I actually see this working in your life. How? Yeah. I need to know more. Yeah. 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 I would add to that and say what you said about when you're actually just living it and then people can see it's like you can't argue with like someone's exactly. faith that they're living yeah. their lived yes. experience. But um, there's been times where like, because I have tons of gay friends. Um, obviously being a queer person. But well, that's not all the case. But anyways, in my case, Obviously is. being you. Oh. Yeah. Being <laughs> you. <laughs> and I'm an introvert. I will say that again, which no one here believes. But, not enough. Um, it's okay. No. I but, am. But um, okay. I've come out to people, or well, they've known I was gay, then like, I've never, like, my faith is not something I hide. But whenever, like, my gay friend is, like, something that, like, isn't, like, up front or something, then I met people and they felt like, hoodwinked or bamboozled or like mm -hmm. misled it's like I was trying to like do some like weird conversion thing mm -hmm. on them or something mm -hmm. yeah and I was like oh yeah I looks I made a specific specific posts on Facebook five years ago five or six Wait, and your blog post maybe that one oh, yeah okay, it's now it's since it. now on my website but okay, yeah, yeah it was on Facebook at the time and y'all the gays in my comment section like were just I was like did y'all not know that I was I've been a believer and so I was like but it was like the act of saying it and then I think for me, whenever you come out to other queer people or come out as Christian, but it's just like they feel that like you're judging them in their life for not yes. living with your ethics. Yeah. When I'm yes, just like, yes. no. And I was like, if my mm -hmm. life challenges you, then that's great. Explore that. But like, I'm just mm -hmm. telling you how I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah I, I had one experience where I had some friends and I mean, it came out pretty early that I was Christian. I can't remember. They wanted to hang out on a Sunday night or uh, they wanted to go to brunch Sunday. And I was like, I have church. I don't know. And then it started the conversation. But they had never really asked me about my sex life or lack thereof. <laughs> so, like, but they talked about their sex lives. Mm -hmm. And it, I just realized, I was like, okay, it's gotten to a point. I'm like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. And then I guess some, one of them found the podcast. Mm. And then I remember we were, okay, I was, we were, we were on a gay bowling league. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, the thing. That sounds amazing. We were on, they were on a team, we were on a team and we were, we were, um, we were doing a competition and one of them goes, so I found your podcast. And I was like, oh, 
Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And yeah, we had a conversation because they were like, "Well, why did you never bring it up?" And I'm like, "You've never asked. Yeah. 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 Like you've never Normalize asked it. about my life. Normalize it. I- I'm not gonna come like here and start talking about my lack of sex, yeah. like or all of this. And um, it's I I think it's definitely hard because sometimes like there there will be conversations about them not understanding or them thinking that it makes me like ex gay or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say now we're in a good place. They're like, oh yeah, no, you're, yeah. we're good. Like, yeah. but, um, it definitely is a, a, sometimes a tension, like trying to figure out when to bring it up or mm-hmm, not. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think there's any right answer. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think it's also good for us to remember not every queer person is in a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Like we are not, I mean, I'm, I'm not single. I got it. That's a different, but we are not the only people who are queer and single. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't we it doesn't mm. have to be this like weird obscure life or lifestyle, know. you know? I, like we can find commonality. I think it's okay for me to share this story and if it's not then I'll take it out and we'll just have shared it here. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Christian like uh, the magic of editing. What's okay. going to happen? Mm-hmm. Um so we went to oh my gosh, this is so chaotic, but sure, whatever. Who is we? What? Who is we? Who we is went. Christian I, Nathaniel, and we had a bunch of friends that we went to Pride. If you tell me the story that you told me, okay, good. Because I was like, don't tell that story. (laughs) (laughs) Don't tell that story you told me. Well, well, tell me that (laughs) story. (laughs) Now I want to know. No, okay, so we went to Pride this past year Mm -hmm. in Fort Lauderdale. And, you know, they give out, like, all the things. They throw things from the parade. Do you mean condoms? And they throw condoms. No, I wasn't. But they throw a bunch of stuff. And then you come, and there's a bunch of condoms. Yeah. And then um, there was a story of um, us, like, having a bag of a bunch of condoms. Mm -hmm. And one of our friends, who's not Christian, um, was over and being like, well, we're not going to use these. Here you go. (laughs) And he's like, I'm not going to use them. And I'm like... You'll use them a lot quicker <laughs> and a lot sooner than anyone in this household. And it was it started the most interesting, like, mm. it was, again, I don't know why I started that story. I'm sorry, y'all. No, this is no, probably way too much but information. It's, it's important. Like, I, I was saying this to folks another night, a couple nights ago, like, we don't need to over-sexualize our identities and our experiences. Right. And we can't do that to other queer mm-hmm. folks. Yeah. So we, like, just, again, us being single, celibate, or, you know, in mixed orientation marriages, that doesn't mean then we need to approach every other yeah. queer person as if they're going around sleeping yeah. with people every other Absolutely. night. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's exactly. not honoring. Yeah, not 100%. Honoring but it was a really fun, funny, and it still just stands out in my brain. So that yeah, I want to yeah. share it. Um, we're getting, we're really at an hour, but I wanted to at least open if there's w- one other thing someone wanted to share or, or a question or anything before we close. Yeah, yeah, let me see. Yeah, go ahead. I haven't really heard you guys' podcast. Oh. Hello, first time. <laughs> Long time listener, first time call. So, like, if someone comes out, yeah. like, how to approach them with love yeah. and all of that? Mm. Specifically someone who's younger, like, yeah. In, in, yeah. Yeah. youth in yeah. your church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Grant. I think we're Do all it. like, eh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, Take it. I'm sure working in a church setting, you, you have so many of the skills already. Yes. Yes. I think what makes things difficult is for young people who come out, the the pressure is can can be so intense that everything seems to be high definition, and small rejections seem like huge rejections, mm-hmm. and small uncertainties feel like huge doubts, and so I think a, a real gift that I have received when I came out in like earlier years was someone who was a non-anxious presence Mm, (laughs) (laughs) who I could come out to and they didn't return my energy to me. Yes. Because I did not need my energy returned to me. (laughs) I was trying to get the energy out. Mm -hmm. And so someone who would listen and not freak out. 
mm-hmm. was yeah. so important to yeah. me. That's yeah. such a simple thing, but it was so important to me because there's a whole conversation you can have afterward mm-hmm. yeah. about, and, and you're going to have to ask a lot of clarifying questions about what exactly they mean me, by the yeah. words they use because mm-hmm. no one uses those words correctly. And whatever words you use, like, so, did I say correctly? I mean, no one uses those words. Universally. U- universally. That's what I meant. Yeah. And every word you use, someone has a problem with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> every <laughs> all every word. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> I feel so. like you can always and should always. There's a lot of things you should do when yeah. something comes out. But first and foremost, you can always and should always, like, praise the vulnerability, yes. praise the honesty, yes. celebrate the fact that Tell something that was like deep locked inside of them is now out and and they can like come to you mm-hmm. as their full self. Like that is something to celebrate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they saw you as someone that like, hey, I trust this person. I don't catch your name or what, but I trust this person that I'm going to share this deep part of myself and my identity and my uh experience with them because I I think I believe that they will handle it yes. well. And I will never forget I came out to my youth pastor my freshman year of college so I went back home for Christmas break. And I came out to John and he looked at me and he was like, "Thanks for telling me that and I want you to know that God still loves you." Mm-hmm. And but then we just started there. So it was mm-hmm. never this mm-hmm. like yeah. cuz like obviously like I mean I think messaging is different than even when we were coming out like compared to youth in the church now or whatever, but like youth. the stigma is still there yeah. of like, oh, the church is not going to respond well because we're not that far removed from the church yeah. not responding yeah. well. A lot of them still don't. And so just like to know that like to reaffirm them that like God mm-hmm. loves you, we love you, mm-hmm. you have a place in God's family, you belong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just, I feel compelled. Mm-hmm. Do you know I don't think that there is, I mean, I know that your John mm-hmm. it, meant well and I'm yeah. well received. Mm-hmm. Something recently that has been a thought of mine is when people stay what was it what did you say you guys want you to know that god still loves god you. still loves you yeah still still like why would you not rough not? yes word. <laughs> yes still. Yeah. still means despite mm-hmm. still despite means of this yeah. i'm going to be generous towards you even though i don't really want to yeah god mm-hmm. does love, love you, you. Mm-hmm. god is celebrating this moment yeah. with you in vulnerability yeah and he might have even said, God loves you, but probably believe, in my head, I probably I just believe, listened. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, so it could have been that. Yeah, no. I was talking but, yeah. to another pastor about this recently, mm-hmm. and um, he has a queer couple in his church, and they were going to dinner with them. And he was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a little nervous. And then he, I said, well, what would you say if the topic came up about theology? And he was like, I would say, even though we don't agree, maybe theologically, I, I still want to be your pastor, and I still want to have you serve and be a part of our church, and I still want, and I was like, ugh, can we say I want to, mm-hmm. I delight in, I need mm-hmm. you to yeah. be, because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it just holds a little something. Yeah. 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 It's the difference between being tolerated and being wanted. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah, that's yes. good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That, that's I'm glad good. y'all clarified right. that. That's good. All right. Well, thank you all for doing this. This closes season four. We're just so grateful to all of you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. co-hosts, what a fabulous season this has been with all of us. Just yes. like yes. going and learning and just having fun. So, so I love y'all so much. I really yeah. think, except yeah. for trying to manage all y'all's schedules, we've gotten into a groove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We know where that was aimed at. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I said earlier, I have jobs up. <laughs> And, All right. and thank you for yeah. having the conversation with us. Yes. That, that's yes. my takeaway of this exactly. episode. Like, yeah. we were talking about, please always yeah. approach this podcast with us. It's I love that. such an honor I when you that. all, like, everyone writes in and shares oh, it's what's the best. processing yeah. and yeah. your thoughts on it and what you're getting out of it and what you agree with or what you don't agree with. Yeah. All of, it's actually yeah. a lot of fun. It's like, oh, cool. That's yeah. a thought and that's an idea. People are actually listening. Yeah. 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 Like, Paul will live text me as he's listening and I'm yeah. just like, this is hilarious. So <laughs> so. If you'd like to connect while we're still here at the conference, feel free. Like, yes. Grant, yes. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Grant is so. signing autographs Saturday. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. In the prophetic stop. sass crop top. Stop. <laughs> stop. stop. I'm leaving. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you all. Thank Good you. Night. Night. Yes. Uh. All right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed hearing us having fun at Revoice and 
getting the last bits of our, our live episode, but we don't want to leave you with that. Yes. We are really excited because Very. part of our time during this retreat was talking about what's ahead, yeah. and we want to give you all a glimpse of what to look forward to in the next season, season five. Season, season yeah. five. Season five. Season. That's right. I can't believe, y'all, it was, I loved last night. I know I shared this this photo on the Instagram of us around the fire. It was a great picture. I loved it. Yeah. It was didn't even cute. Yeah. 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 I think I put yeah. it in our chat. Yeah, you did. But um, they, we got to sit around a fire last night and plan the season. And in the recording, you just heard we didn't know what the season theme was going to be. Yeah. Um, but um, would someone like to share what our season theme will be? Or do you want... Um... Um, I forgot the word. Yeah, I want you to do it because yeah, so, I think we didn't. I don't think we decided on the actual phrase. We haven't decided, combined. Yeah, we haven't decided on the name yet. The title. But basically, we want to be able to build constantly. We've been building on yes. things. We talked about belonging and community. We talked about thriving instead of surviving. Identity inclusion, resilience. And we we're like, okay, resilience is about, in a sense, surviving. Like, how do we, mm-hmm. you know, go withstand? From there. Yeah, we yeah. withstanding mm-hmm. and building on that. We want to be able to do talk about how to reclaim the things that have been taken against from us, the things that have been used against us. Good things. Good things. Things that have goodness in them. That's right. But we get afraid of them because of the way that they've been used to attack Mm -hmm. us. Exactly, Mm -hmm. yes. And so we want to explore what does it look like to reclaim the deeper things of faith and maturity. Yes. What does it look like to talk about sanctification? Mm -hmm. Um, healing, healing, mm-hmm. uh, purity, More joy, joy, joy affirmation. affirmation. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. You can tell I'm excited about that. That's right. Yeah. What kind of pride is good pride? Mm-hmm. Yes. And also Grant's like phenomenal idea of reclaiming the narrative of the gospel, mm-hmm. like the yes. narrative, yeah. the arc of the story of the Bible. Like I cannot wait to be a part to listen to it. Grant's I'm, genius. I'm so excited to be able to do this with you all. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I feel like we've gotten better and better each season and we've gained so much wisdom, not just by living our own lives, but by talking with each other and um, yeah. having really focused conversations and having incredible guests. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited to see the fruit of all of that over yeah. the past few years. Yeah. I think the one thing that we're potentially gonna be doing a little bit more is we're actually gonna have more co-host conversations yep. mm-hmm. um, get to dialogue in this way because we're smart we yeah. have got stuff to say no, <laughs> I will definitely say different. I feel like sometimes I'm swinging right. out of my weight class with y'all like y'all all got like degrees no, 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 no. <laughs> there's been a couple times at this retreat right? where you said things uh-huh. and I've been like oh my gosh <laughs> I, I yeah. have to go lie down <laughs> <laughs> says the woman that's probably read the bible more than all of us exactly. combined that's probably yeah. true exactly. yes so we're really excited about that. And also really excited to announce that we have merch. Yeah! Yeah! Good merch is awesome. Good it's good good beautiful merch. merch. Yeah. Comfortable merch. That's, right. That's important. Um, Stylish um, merch. Yeah, we have sweaters, tank tops, crop tops. Ooh. That's right, gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stickers, journals, all of that can be found on lifeonsidebee.com. Go to our store there and you can get that all now. Um, it helps to support what we're doing here mm. and also get the word out because yeah. that's another thing to be able to connect in this. So much of this podcast has been grown organically yes we really haven't put a lot in marketing and and what's something you said earlier this this weekend was when you when you search for side b gay on the internet like the first thing that comes up is anyway or one of the first things that comes up is this podcast yeah like it's a place where people come so i'm i'm excited um Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, to get the word out so that more people can get connected and find their way. Yes. Yeah. We All have, this. Yeah. right now we have our Listening is Gospel Work merch, Intimate Friendships are Beautiful, mm. Prophetic Sass. Yes. Um, we will soon be also releasing our Yahweh is the Name, God is the Pronoun mm. shirt, Love and our Be Queer, Be Holy. Those are going to be really, really good. So check those out. We can't wait to do the next season with you all. Mm-hmm. To go, oh, it's going to be so good. So well, good. and tell somebody about the podcast yes. too. Yes. So this new season, I think, especially for folks who don't understand much about our community, mm-hmm. or maybe even about you as a listener, what you're going through mm-hmm. as an LGBTQ Christian, like 
I really think that this will be a season that will really like share some really deep insights yes. with people who don't know much about what what we struggle with, but also like what joy we're experiencing, yes. what fullness of the gospel yeah. and theology and, and how the God is speaking the... through yes. us. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be bring people in this season. Yes. Please Let's do it. Please, please do. It's gonna. I'm surprised that when we were going over episodes, we were able to go because we set, try to stay around twenty. We Ish. literally almost we almost like got it like yeah, perfect right at yeah. twenty yeah. on the spot and yeah. we'll see if it stays like. Because <laughs> then there were like five more that came. It wasn't after. that many, but it was like a couple. Yeah, yeah but it couple, still was like yeah. within the range. I'll have to see how we merge or separate yeah. and all of those things. Mm-hmm. Together. It's organic. It really yeah. is. It really is. It is. So, because I love our format, how we don't just randomly put episodes, but we build. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we pick a theme. I, I I it's one of the things I really love about our structure, of how we do stuff. So. We cannot wait for the next season. We have a nice surprise to end this episode on with you. Um, We've been having, doing clips at the end of all of our episodes with uh, what would you say to your younger self? Oh, that's And we put, yeah, I I put together. I cried during mine. I'm pretty sure. Oh. Such the question. Yours was great. I can't can't even remember, but I remember being really impacted Mm. by what you said. So we, I put together a clip, all the clips of what our guests over the season have said to their younger self, mm. and we can't wait for you to hear it. So thank you, everyone, and we will see you next season. See Take you. care, Bye. Bye. Love you.